The first time I heard about multiple non-ejaculatory orgasms from men, my mind was blown because at that time I was really struggling with premature ejaculation and I couldn't have sex for more than a minute or two with my girlfriend without coming. And it was like filling me with all sorts of sexual anxiety and self-judgment and um, it was around that time when I discovered this book, which you've probably heard of, The Multi-Orgasmic Man by Montauk Chia and Douglas Abrams. And this was a time of like major investigation in my life around sexuality. And I read that book, and or at least I read the first bit of that book. It was pretty dense, honestly, and I didn't get through it all the way, but the first part of it, it uh, one of the big things in that book is it says, learn how to separate orgasm from ejaculation. And to me, again, that was like, how is that even fucking possible? Like, what does that even mean, you know? Um, so I experimented with a lot of practices in that book and I didn't actually have much success, honestly, for a while. And, you know, fast forward a bunch of years to now, I have this course, it's the Orgasmic Mastery course, and a bunch of men have gone through it from all sorts of countries all over the world. And a lot of these men have been able to have non-ejaculatory orgasms. Some of them haven't. Uh, and it's, you know, really largely dependent on the amount of work and the amount of effort that's put in. It makes me think back to, I was at an in-person retreat with David Dita. That's the guy that wrote this book, <laughs> which you've probably heard of. I was at an in-person retreat with him maybe three or four years ago, and he was talking about uh, sexual techniques and sexual mastery. And he shared with us, it was a group of 100 men from around the world, and he shared with us that he's actually stopped teaching sexual techniques because, because of the amount of energy and effort it takes and because of how few men actually are willing and able to put in that effort to get the results of non-ejaculatory orgasms, of full body orgasms, of the tantric orgasm, you know, the kind of thing where you just feel like your entire body feels like it's ejaculating for minutes on end and you're not ejaculating and you don't go into the refractory period and you experience deep connection with yourself and deep connection with your partner. And he was just saying like, <laughs> the amount of work it takes to get to that place is, is uh, in, it's just, it's monumental, you know, and I'll agree. And this is why in my course, I made it a five week thing. And the, the tasks I ask men to do in that course are substantial. I mean, it might not seem like a lot at first, but when you actually start to do the exercises and you start to incorporate all these techniques into the self-pleasure sessions and really begin to rewire your sexual response system in your brain and how everything responds to pleasure, you realize like, this is a really big thing we're working with here, you know? If you're 25 to 35 years old, somewhere in there, you have at least one, maybe two decades of experience masturbating and programming your sexual response system with porn, with whatever habits you've been, you know, you've been imprinting on your system. And God, something's in my nose, excuse the nose picking. <laughs> um, and you know, you better believe like, whatever your habits are around this stuff, like they leave an impact on your system and they create grooves, if you wanna call them that, in your brain. They create neural pathways that the more you do them, the easier they get and the more you default to going down those pathways. So switching everything up and going into the non-ejaculatory realm takes serious effort not only physically, but neurologically speaking. <sighs> and it really requires a fundamental um, switch in how we perceive orgasm. Like what is orgasm actually? This switch is the key. Like when you think of orgasm, if you've never had a non-ejaculatory orgasm, and I'll, I'll just go back to my own thoughts years ago, all the things I have associated with orgasm are genital contractions, sperm comes out, semen comes out. I experience a big peak and then a crash. Then my erection goes away and I go into this state of like, ugh, ugh, you know, and I'm not interested in sex at that point. And I, maybe I want to eat some food or like watch a movie, uh, but I definitely generally don't want to keep having sex. And the, you know, one of the biggest things, the biggest associations I had with that experience was the release, this huge release of tension and and holding on and effort and energy and it would sink into this place of nothingness you know this great deep ease this place of completion and that is a huge association that needs to break 
uh, from the concept of orgasm if you're going to be having non-ejaculatory orgasms. Because if you have a non-ejaculatory orgasm, you don't experience that huge release, that feeling of completion, because that is what's associated with ejaculation. It's the ejaculatory orgasm. It's the ejaculatory process that triggers the release of different neurochemicals and physiological things in your body that brings you into that state of deep ease and deep completion and the refractory period. It's not the orgasm. It's not the orgasmic experience. And in my experience, a non-ejaculatory orgasm, it's just fundamentally different. You know, in this book, there is mention of guys who are able to have the involuntary genital contractions and squeezing that are associated with a typical orgasm. But in my experience and the experience of, of the teachers that I've studied with directly, that's not actually the case when there's a non-ejaculatory orgasm. There's this, uh, it's more of like a full body wave that comes on and it's not like a peak. It's something that builds and builds and builds and you can ride it and you can ride it. And it's like, it just blossoms and, and unfolds like a wave that just keeps growing and growing and it can be incredible. And at first it might just feel like a little tingle or a little shot of energy, but eventually it can feel like waves of ambrosia that's just coursing through every vein in your body and it's magical. It's magical and it doesn't end in a big bang, you know? Sex doesn't end after that. Sex doesn't have to end after that. And in my experience, it usually doesn't. Mm. And so I'm making this video just for conversation around this topic. And because this course that I have, the Orgasmic Mastery course is open for enrollment right now. And I want anybody to know who's considering signing up for this that the whole concept of multiple orgasms that I teach is different than if you were to just have multiple typical ejaculatory orgasms without ejaculating. It's going to feel different and it's going to take a lot of effort to get to that place and it's so fucking worth it, you know. And as, a, as part of this process, you're absolutely going to learn how to overcome premature ejaculation, for sure. Like that's a huge, huge piece of this because like, once you bypass that urge to ejaculate, which is totally possible. I can tell you that personal experience and a lot of guys who've gone through this course now, once you get past that ejaculatory reflex, then other doors start to open. Other doors for pleasure and connection and energy start to open that you never even knew existed. It's as if you were walking down the same pathway of sex over and over and over again towards the ejaculatory orgasm, but you didn't even realize that there are all these side doors that you could take that would unfold into different universes of pleasure. So that's it. That's what I got. Let me know if you have any thoughts, questions about this um, kind of an informal video today. I just felt like connecting and saying, hey, hope you have a beautiful day. Cheers to you from Asheville and maybe see you inside the course. And if not, see you in another video. Cheers, brother.